Last time we played, you guys were on a boat. And you were sailing upriver, and you were dealing with the fallout of having slaughterated all of the uh, scale blades on board, for the most part. Woo. Slaughter! <clears throat> um, Drew tried to tackle one, and they I assume they kind of, like, scratched each other's faces and poked at each other's eyes and stuff as he climbed to the edge of the boat. It got over the edge, and Venoran had to finish him off with some magic missiles. And then you, uh, you had Lieutenant Graveris of the Scale Blades, who uh, is your prisoner, and gave you some information because she didn't want you to murder her. And uh, collectively, you figured out that there may be some kind of rift in the Scale Blades, whereby the Scale Blade <clears throat> regulars are not aware that Valen may very well be working with the Order. Something she does not think, nor do you think, the Scale Blades would be all that happy about. On top of that, some weird shit's being built over uh, Riverhaven. Something that's supposed to aid in their defense <clears throat> by turning your average uh, farmer into a much more capable fighter. So that's going on. Um, as we left, you guys had just sailed past Riverhaven, and we're figuring out where to go next. Um, you had learned that sometime in the next handful of days, uh, Valen is apparently meeting with high-level people from the Order, um, something that is publicly being said to be kind of a peace negotiation to keep Riverhaven safe, but since you have information they're working together, it could very well be a meeting about more important matters. But you're a little nervous about getting into the city. So another idea that was floated was to head towards Arangard to see what's happening there, because reports say that the city did not opt to be put behind one of the red slave shields like Arninari was, and that they are in fact contributing fighters towards the orc army. Uh, and then there was discussion of just going and talking to Oom, the stone giant. Who's the man? And that may or may not be a, you know, giant side quest or not, but uh, that is something you could do. I just, I know Riverhaven is, is, there's all these things happening there, but I just don't think we're strong enough to go in and stop it at this point. Honestly, I wouldn't mind taking a little detour to the mountains to see Oom. Yeah, I agree. Sounds I like a fun time. time. We yeah. should recruit Oom. Alright, Drew would like an NPC follower. Not just any NPC follower. Oom. Sounds good to me. To Oom! Um. I am go for Oom. Um. Okay. Barbo, do you have uh, do you have video for Oom? Um? Uh, the visions? What or, video? Or, or, or whatever, whatever you're gonna do for me. I think we well, have the minor the illusion. The illusion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Alright, we we'll go for Oom. Um. Did we decide to drop the people off somewhere close? Is that code Whatever. for kill them and dump them over the edge? No. You know, I like the whole killing plan. I'm good with that. I, I think we were going to drop them at Fort Drayden after having seeded them with misinformation. Which I guess at this point the misinformation would be that we're, I don't know, going... That you have a plan? That, that we have a plan and we know what we're doing. Go, go tell them we have a plan and we know what we're doing. That way they'll never see what's coming. 
I think just talking about all of our plans would probably um, confuse them as to what we were doing, which would probably be uh, for me. And it certainly confused the party and the DM, so it yeah. would almost assuredly confuse. Trips, Okay, so there's, yeah, so let's let's discuss the handful of things to deal with. You are on a commandeered riverboat. Uh, there's several. There's several groups of people on board to uh, to figure out what you're doing with. There are the passengers, uh, a few of whom were heading north, but this was almost the last stop. We'll say Wellspring was the last place that they were heading. Um, that's like, you know, that's where the boat would normally turn around. But only a few of them were doing that. Most of them were getting off in, in Riverhaven. So a handful of them are a little inconvenienced and inconvenienced and annoyed. You have the crew of the riverboat, of course, who, um, you know, are a little fidgety because there's been a lot of murder on their ship in the last couple of days. And you have uh, Graveris, who is your prisoner who... The, the murder forecast did call for... More, more murder than usual, so they should have expected it. On the plus side, it was justified murder. I mean... Anytime you get excited by murder, it's justified. Let's be real here. Wow. See. Fair enough. Uh, and He's then, Canadian, of course... Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, and you have Graveris, who you're gonna want to keep an eye on. Who I have cut. That means kill, right? The moment Tillman has cuffed himself to her, there didn't seem to be any explicit need for him to do this, but he did it nonetheless. It was an explicit. No, that's just the signal for the rest of us to leave the room. Why the handcuffs are fur lined, nobody knows. It's what he had. We know. We just don't want confirmation. We don't have to not be. Why why they discussed a safe word beforehand? Nobody knows. It's potato. Safe words are for. A weird safe word. All right, so passengers. Well, let's let's go. We're going um, to drop them off at we're we're going to drop them off at Fort Drayton. Let's do this. That's the, the um the following morning, you you go you go to sleep. You guys, you know, presumably somebody stays up and makes sure you know keep keep going north. And remember, I paid the boat captain sixteen gold. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will they will keep going north, especially if somebody's watching over their shoulder. The further up the river they go, the the narrower the river becomes, and uh, they have to go a little slower to, you know, avoid hitting rocks and sinking the ship and drowning everyone on board, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the next morning, as you guys are kind of getting getting ready for your day. Now, you're not quite at Fort Drayden yet. That never really worked out the travel speed of a riverboat. Uh, you get a message. One of the one of the, the lower-ranking uh, ship crewmen um, delivers a message to you, just not like on paper, just a verbal message, uh, telling you that the captain is inviting you to, uh, to lunch with him in his quarters. Uh, to discuss- Can I bring my weapons? The, the young porter tells you they he doesn't think they're necessary, but if it makes you feel more comfortable, okay. This is this is Scats we're talking about. She's not going without her weapons. But she's not going to not go to lunch. Right. Worst case scenario, the captain becomes stew. I mean, is that the worst case scenario? We could just drive this boat wherever we want. That happened. And have a decent lunch. Yep. I'm, I'm sure a great many of you are proficient in waterborne vehicles. I am. Is is Bill still available, or...? No, he's off captaining my ship. Then we're lost. It's a river. How bad could it be? Sure, there's a few forks and banks and Wait, other we're things lost? I could hit. So we'll have really good first half of our story, and then it'll start falling from there, and then the end just won't make any damn sense at all? Yes. It was a television show reference. It was. 
So, uh, yeah, I'll go to lunch. I'll take my date. I will lunch. I will, I will lunch in my armor, but I will make it look fancy. I'll lunch with all, like, six weapons strapped to my back. Wait, you're gonna glamour your armor? Well, why was that echoey? He's gonna put on his black tie armor. Yeah, no. Too will have lunch as long as there's dessert. I'm sure they can whip something up. What does uh, Reyna think about this whole plan and Reveris and all of that? Uh, it's a good question. And presumably, you, you must have had to fill her in on quite a bit because she wasn't. She, of course, wasn't around for really much of any of this. Um, she is worried about the people of Riverhaven. I believe her family was from there. We're going way back yeah. in my NPC creation. I want to say her family was traveling from Riverhaven to Freeport when they, when she passed. I would say she'd probably be most curious about meeting Um. Yeah, so we'll go with that. And what about me being handcuffed to Reveris? Uh, she says nothing of it. She kind of... It's just kind of like, a, oh, this shit again. Kind of what the players are doing. Like, they're not cutting me, so... I, no. uh, I would say she... Uh, okay, let's say she is distrustful. Oh, God, I cut I Reveris' arms, too. <laughs> or someone did. Yeah. Um, let's say that, that she is... Um, she is concerned for you. She doesn't think Riveris is trustworthy. She's concerned that you're going to get hurt. Aw, how sweet. Your mistress is concerned for you and your new lady. That is not my mistress. Don't be gross. Too young. Well, actually, but still somehow too young. Too young. If it's not too young, I will make her younger. She's my daughter, and she's not an elf. See, it's the second one that makes me relaxed. <laughs> the whole being your daughter thing is... But you're an elf, or half-elf. It, it, that just gets confusing. Oh, God. Oh, no. Squeal! <laughs> no. Shocked everyone in the file. So we're going to lunch. It sounds like it, yeah. Yeah. They'll be serving pork. Plenty of long pork lying around. Uh hey, you oh. you arrive at the uh captain's quarters, his private private dining room. There's extra seats laid out for all of you. And um as soon as this random name generator comes up some, with something reasonable, I'll tell you what his name is. It was the next one, no matter what it is. All right, here we go. Jarim Mamul. Where's my... My guess was close. Okay, Captain Jarim. Invite you all to, to sit, and there's... He's got a couple of the... The crewmen bring in uh, some dishes for you. I don't care what's on them, but they're all things that you like. Uh, it's a boat. We'll say it's fish. Or it's fish heavy. And uh, since Tillman often puts himself out there as the sort of pseudo leader or at least spokesperson for the group, uh, he'll primarily address you. Um, he kind of eyes the handcuff as you sit down. Begins by saying, in addition to the, the food I wanted you all to enjoy, I wanted to see if we could establish some uh, parameters for your time on my ship. You've obviously caused quite a uh, stir since coming on board, and uh, we were we had the understanding you were headed to Riverhaven, but it seems that that's no longer the plan. Um, I just wanted to find out what is to come of my passengers, my crew, and my boat. Uh, we plan on 
dropping the passengers that wanted to go to River Haven. Well, what was your ultimate destination? Most of our crew was, or most of our passengers were leaving at River Haven. A few had paid extra to travel north to Wellspring, and then we would travel south to Freeport and repeat. We're a, we're a ferry on this river. I see. Um, I did not notice the wings. We were thinking of dropping the passengers off at Fort Graydon. And going north, uh, not toward Wellspring, but uh, toward the mountains. And he, he pulls out a map and uh, essentially, you can see on the map there. There's that branch that heads. That, it, essentially, the next branch you'd head left, and then the following branch you'd head right and travel until the the river became too shallow towards Arnanari until the river became too shallow to uh, proceed further. Is that is that close to Um? Yeah. So Um was uh, you were crossing the mountains between Arnanari and Stilson's Crossing. Okay. So actually, so, yeah. you could, you could go either up either branch of the river, I guess. Um, and it wouldn't be too bad. But the, the path you would know best would be to go to that middle that middle branch. Yeah. Um, that's that's essentially where you went over the first time. And the the captain, uh, he, he looks at the map, and he kind of points out, you know, where just, just shy of Arnanari, the boat simply will not be able to, to travel. The, ro- the river becomes too shallow and too rocky. Um, but it's a, it seems reasonable to you. It doesn't seem like he's trying to, like, knock you off the ship early or anything like that. And you'll be able to turn around there? Yes. Uh, we <laughs> says we'll float backwards a little ways, but it'll work. Um, tells you he wants to see the people uh, on board uh, compensated for their inconvenience. There are... 25 passengers getting off who were meant to get off in Riverhaven. Um, he would like to see each of them get uh, two gold pieces for their trouble. And there's an extra 10 that were meant that were heading to Wellspring. Uh, he believes they should each get five. I don't think we have to give anything to the Wellspring people because they're not being thrown off. If anything, they're getting there faster. They're not getting there faster. You're going up a different, different path. I didn't hear it. And it all comes out of Lyle's purse. I will kill them all. Uh, how far up past Wellspring could you get if we went that way? Uh, they can. Uh, it'll be an extra day or two of travel for you on foot. Can you get to the A, the second A in Anari? <laughs> the second A in Anari. He can. Or the R. Yeah, we'll say that that bend is where they can get. So you can see that's about a. You can see there's a chunk of distance between there and where you would have gotten dropped off. So if you if you want to go that route, then so we could save fifty gold right there. Yes. Basically, you'll add a day to your trip, but you'll save the fifty and, gold. And ten people that Lyle won't kill. Let's not make promises. We're not sure we can reduce facility or the likelihood of Lyle murdering ten people. There we go. So is that the path you'd rather take? Oh, I'd rather save the extra 50 gold. Okay. Then the captain will make for Wellspring. Okay, so if we each give 10 gold, we can pay off the the four grid people. Or if Lyle gives all the gold. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Look, you made Does promises anyone... about me not killing people, not about scats not killing people. Does anyone not want to contribute to the uh, Riverhaven folk? I, I think I still have some money. I'm not a big fan of contributing, but I do need to make an effort to remember to drop gold in the way. Uh, okay, so assuming okay, so if everyone contributes ten. The math is easy. Somehow, as players, record that you spent 50 yep, gold pieces. still has money. money. Oh, shit. I have given up a 10. 
And if when you're giving them the money, you make it sound like it's, you know, paying for them to maybe not remember very clearly the faces of the people on the ship or the details of why they were dropped at Fort Drayden, that's fine too. And Fort Drayden is a little ways in from the, it's not on the water, it's just close to it, so yeah, you're not like, you're not going to be visible from the fort when you're when you're dropping people off. And I'll indicate that we are trying to deal with the orc problem. Uh, during your entire din- uh, luncheon, Graveris is rather quiet. You do notice she seems she's quiet, but she's definitely listening to everything. Like it, not not more than usual. Just she seems to be a, a observant individual. And she got food, right? Yes. She had to eat with her non-dominant hand. And only like three times did it look like she was going to stab you in the face with the fork. Don't worry, when she spends with, more time with, with her hand, it'll hand, have hand or other hand? With her, with her other hand, the one holding the fork. Uh, the captain would also like your assurance that nobody else gets murdered on his ship during the rest of this trip. Can't make that make promise. no promises. If no one tries to murder us, we won't try to murder them. Let's More not make likely. that promise either. Alright, the captain's willing to accept that as an answer. Um, the, people, the people we took out came after us, not the other way around. I know you didn't three, see the beginning of the fight, three, but... Three-fifths of the group will not murder people. I mean, usually they have to attack me first, unless I'm, like, hungry. Or bored. Yep. Or it's Tuesday. Occasion, like, every every fourth Sunday as well. Okay. The captain calls for one of his, you know, one of the, the crew to come in. They take your dishes and, and your silverware away, and they bring in dessert, since somebody asked for it. It's more fish. Because it's a boat. Mm. And they didn't bring ice cream. Uh, but nonetheless, dessert. you come to an agreement, and uh, by the time you're finished with lunch, you're just about at the a good spot to drop some passengers off at Fort Raiden. Um, they're, they're annoyed, um, and slightly worried they're going to be viciously killed by monsters in the woods. But uh, a couple, you hear, you overhear a couple of them saying maybe they, can, with the money they got, they can afford to uh, maybe pay for a couple guards from Fort Drayden to escort them back. And it doesn't sound like the worst plan to you. And then there's yeah, a travel. Or, oh, good. And I tell them or check to see if any scale blades from Fort Drayden are going back to Riverhaven. You can travel with them. Very frugal. Uh, and then there's a travel montage. As you travel up montage. the winding river, and the river becomes... What's, what's the music? Uh, very important. Very important. I wasn't prepared for that question. And Kansas, wayward son. And the little audio thing only has... Oh, here we go. River Town. What is this? It's not a song at all. I think the Canada fairies. It's a great song. It's the best song. That's what it is. I, oh, let's go. I, oh, let's go. No. A few days later, you arrive in Wellspring, a town, that, a little hamlet that you've actually been to. That was the the uh, little story point you stopped at, where you killed the dryad instead of getting the uh, tip from her, and then the halflings got eaten by frogs. And it was oh, all yeah. good fun, you know, normal stuff. Yeah. Uh, you travel uh, as you travel north. It becomes the river becomes <laughs> more narrow did, and did more narrow. Did Scott eat the dryad? I don't remember. No, it, it controlled her, and it made her almost kill all of you. 
remember that part. I was uh, after after they they insisted upon killing the dryad. I was trying to remember if Scott's ended up eating it or not. Uh, quite possibly, honestly. I don't think we explicitly said it, but it might have been understood. Yeah. Or since it was like dried up wood, maybe used it to roast something else. We don't oh. typically debate whether or not something would... can die. You know, you, you use part of it to roast it. It's like its own <laughs> roasting machine. <laughs> that is dark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a few so a few days after, or a day or two after Drayden, after you drop people. Sorry, after you, after you drop people off at. At Wellspring, the river becomes narrower and rockier, and the boat has to go slower and slower. And eventually, just about as you're getting on the map to where the Anari part of the label is, uh, the captain comes to you and informs you that this is as far as the boat can go. Uh, is there anything you guys did on your on your couple days of un- relatively uneventful voyaging? Long rested. Yes, obviously everyone has several... You've gotten several long rests. Your time I'll on the try. boat... Go ahead. Your time on the boat is relatively uneventful. Um, there was no need to murder anyone. Especially once the... Once the passengers were dropped off on Wellspring, things became a little more, like, um, like regimented. You know, like the crew wasn't having to be host to anyone anymore. Uh, you know, they kind of just saw you as... You, you know what I mean? Like, they, you weren't passengers, really. You were private contractors um, at that point. And um, other than making sure... The captain took uh, efforts to make sure you were treating your prisoner okay. You know, making sure she was... okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Making sure... Yeah. Making sure she was brought food and stuff. But other than that, uh, other than the concern that you were not uh, mistreating your your prisoner they were, they stayed out of your business I would have spent the time trying to get to know her personally I did want to ask at one point what's your star side when we're uh, alone how she came to join the scale blades and you know, because elves tend to be not that there aren't, you know, elves that are have a little bit of a darker presence, but they tend to be, you know, life loving, forest dwelling, uh fireball. Hippies. <laughs> people. And this is a sort of dark you know, to become a mercenary, a lone mercenary is uh not usually the elven way. Unless something has happened. She tells you that... What what was your question going to be? I couldn't remember if we established her as Elvin, then I remembered, yes, I did. Uh, She tells you that, uh, to her, the Scale Blades aren't a dark presence. They are a a force uh, that is called upon when things are dark. She joined because there was really never anything else that crossed her mind. Um, her father was a scale blade and her mother. It seemed only natural when she, she came of age to, to enlist with them. She tells you for her that they've always been... They're the people, people that... They're the people called on when uh, innocent people need help. Uh, she admits that there, not everyone in uh, the organization has such an idealistic viewpoint of the group. The leadership has always been such that the mission gets done one way or the other. Have the scale blades changed since you or your parents have been members? I mean, uh, mind control isn't exactly sound like protecting the innocent from the dark forces she tells you there's been two two large upheavals in recent history 
the death of the founder of the scale blades. Senior scale blade. I have to go really deep into my notes to find his name. That was several years ago. Uh, Maganti was his named successor, who took over at that time. Maganti had a similar approach to things and kept the scale blades in, in line, uh, though he wasn't as strong of a leader and um, certainly allowed other people to uh, certainly allowed divisions within the, the scale blades to operate in different ways. She tells you that the from what she little she knows about the device being constructed at, at Riverhaven, it is something used when there's no other way. Um, it's, <clears throat> it focuses people on the task at hand, in this case, to build up Riverhaven's defenses and prepare for an inevitable orc attack. Uh, your, your average commoner just doesn't have the right stuff to uh, even to protect their home. And she says, ultimately, the city will survive, which is what we were hired to do. So you're a good guy. Most people in their own minds are good guys. She kind of shrugs and says, you know, I certainly try to be. Um, she says, I'm sure there's things in your history that would be uh, questionable if one were to simply describe your deeds. Yeah, one fairly recent one. That would be the killing of McGinty. May or may not end up being a good thing. Did somebody die? It's a good thing. Okay, so just, you know, oh, more so conversations. I'll ask her about her family. You know, just trying to, uh, pardon the expression, humanize her and humanize myself to her. But sure. I won't tell her any of the Helen Moore stuff. You know, the, you, let's do an insight check just to. Uh, unless. Not, like, for any specific thing, just to kind of, like, tell me how well you, uh, interpret her interaction. Oh, you crit. Um, I critted. So as you're attempting to humanize yourself to her, uh, you can tell she's doing the same thing to you. Um, she, she is sharing things about her family and about her life, and in a way that you... You, you get that she's trying... She doesn't want you to slaughter her. And so, you know, the way, uh, the way uh, like a, a prisoner would be told to humanize themselves to the enemy, make them, make them sh you know, know that you're a person, etc. Right. Should, shouldn't you be half elvenizing yourself to her? Yeah. And, um, and I get the sense that she's being honest. I mean, even if it's for a particular motive. Yeah, maybe maybe she's being like, you know, maybe she doesn't remember, you know, the stories from her youth quite as fondly as she's making it seem like, you know, she just wants it to be like, yeah, maybe she's going a little over the top on things, but she's not blatantly making stuff up that you can tell. Right, right. Well, yeah, like I'm not talking about, I was the thief before I died, and then I had this whole life, and, you know. <laughs> She's sharing an idealized version of herself with you. Okay, cool. That's all I got. I said fire to Lyle. No fire to Lyle. <laughs> little, little fire? Little fire to Lyle? Just a little one. It's like the toes. It's a hot foot. There's no acceptable amount of fire for Lyle. So you guys disembark, uh, disembark from the boat and start heading towards the mountains. 
Reverse will ask Tommy at a certain point, like. You seemed highly motivated to find out what was happening at Riverhaven, and now we're many miles north of there. On a seemingly unrelated mission. We thought the DM had prepared Riverhaven, so we went this direction. Somewhat true. Tell her there are things going on up north. Perhaps people we can get in touch with that will give us more information about what's going on. Now, why are you guys just assuming I need you to roll initiative? Mm hmm. Oh. Why were there manticores on the list? Because I never cleared the initiative from last time. What about the one manticores? Well, well, well. So, by heading north, you guys took on a risk that you, you, you would have known you were doing. Um, you are entering orc territory. Why would you do that? Bring it. Scats hasn't eaten in hours. I'm ready for this, man. There is indeed an orc mm, hunting party. Something like that. Um, and now you guys... Can orc run. 1 through 5, Orog 1 and 2, and Bob. Bob the orc. It happens. All right, so Venoran, you got a 16 initiative that I was forced to delete. So, initiative from the rest of you. I got a 17. Very happy for you. I'm going to re-roll Everything? again, because well, re I'm supposed to roll it twice and take the highest, but the 21 is probably going to be the highest. I would I suspect so, yeah. Yep, definitely. Okay, we'll go back to the 21 then. And someone didn't have his token selected. I did, I clicked on it. Oh, well, whatever. There you go. And we're just going to, out of necessity, since as far as I know, Tillman and Graveris are still shackled together, you guys are going to go with... click on my... I have no idea. You can't click it. on my character. You can't click on your character. Dan I can't broke click it on again. his character either. Oh, because I'm not on the clicking tool. In a wah, wah, wah. But you did draw a purple line. Purple line. Purple line. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Raina should not be out front. But why not? Some reason Raina, I'm in the tank back. for us. I swear I just heard a landline ring. Raina rolled a 13. I heard. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm waiting for them to pick it up. But it was a landline. Yes, Canada. because we have the landline. Canada. Mind blown. Yeah, I still have a landline here, but. I, got old I think living here too. probably someone called my mom or my dad on Skype and it went through through our landline because they probably didn't pick up on Skype. I do yeah, kind of like more sense, at least. Uh, let's see. War Chief. Ooh. That is a 21. And the Orogs. Five. Orog. Oh, a nine plus one. Oh, Rogue's going at ten and eyes of Groomsh. The eyes have it. Go at sixteen. Okay. It's been a while since we did like just a simple straight combat. Something will happen to fuck it up. Um, a swarm. You want to let Scats go first? Scats! 
Okay, let's yeah, see. You guys hear the crunch and you know crunch of dried branches and stuff as the not so subtle orc party comes uh, starts coming through the trees ahead of you. They are a very very long way away. Okay, I'm gonna hide. Uh, I should probably roll sneakiness up here. You can do a stealth check to see if you got there without being spotted. That's a pretty good one. Do not underestimate the sneaks. And the orcs will see if they spot you. No. Oh jeez, I just I just zoomed out and realized how many I just snuck right in front of. That's exciting. It wouldn't have changed what you did anyways. No, it wouldn't have. All right, the orc war chief. They're they're just advancing at a slow pace. They don't know that anyone's there yet, but I will have the orc war chief do a perception check. Uh, no, still doesn't see your eighteen. Blurble. <laughs> I'm gonna move uh, north northeastish to what looks like a tree stump and climb up on top of it. Sure, perfect. Right that go through? Yeah, still dealing with chest golds. Uh, yeah. Uh, do I still have an action or does my movement come as my action? Nope, on every turn you get an action, potentially a bonus action, and your movement. All as separate things. Alright, and we're definitely engaging in combat here. Well, <laughs> if not... I don't think we're sneaking past those. Alright. I mean, if you're all as hidey as cats, you might have been able to. Alright, well, I'm going to cast... Uh, let's see. I'm hopeful I have line of sight on Orc... Orc Chief 1? Sure. Not, If not all the way... I can reach all the way to them. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. going to cast Elder's Blast. Uh, 25 for 14. Uh, 25 will absolutely hit. And going again. Uh, 16 for 10. 16 does hit. Alright, I think stealth is blown. Lyle. There goes my plan. Yeah, the war chief howls in pain as bolts of energy strike it. Uh-huh. Let me see. I'm just going to move and ready an action to attack the first thing that gets close enough to me. Do you mean enemy? Alright, let me clarify that to enemy. Then. And are you preparing with your bow or your rapier? Rapier. The eyes of Grimsh. Oh, I need their... Uh little thing I got from roll 20 doesn't tell me what spells they have. Or they has none of the spells. My of self. They can convince themselves that they have something that is less than three feet by three feet. You hear uh, orcish chanting and spells being cast. Benorn. Uh Mage armor. And I'm going to go... Uh, hide in the trees somewhere not too far from Scats. you want to do a stealth roll to see if you got there without being noticed? Well, at this point it's a little late, actually. Okay, yep, you're behind a tree. You've got, like, cover and stuff. Uh, let's see. Reyna. Whose sheet I did not pull up. That's an appropriate roll anyway. Look, guys, I'm hiding. Nobody can see me, right? 
Reyna is going to cast... Okay, Reyna will step up a little bit to be behind a tree. And then she's going to cast Bless. Why, thank you. I just sneezed. Oh, roll G100. I didn't realize you just sneezed. So, uh, slight retcon here. You run up to the tree. You yell out, Look at me, I'm hiding! And then... You roll a 45, which means... You begin levitating. So, you attempt to hide behind the tree, and then you float up 20 feet. And you're just over the tree line. Hey, as long as you don't draw attention to me, I'm all good with this. Actually, this is probably drawing attention away from you. Then, perfect. Good job, Venorn. Uh, Scats, Venorn, and Lyle, you are all blessed. Yay! Meaning, on your... For the time being, on your... Attack rolls, ability checks, etc. You can add a d4 if you need it to de-roll. Yay! The Orogs... Orog 1... Charges Lyle. Lyle, that puts I get him... my attack first. You get your attack first. If you drop him, he won't be able to make an attack. That's the goal. I'm assuming a 10 kills him. A 10 demolishes him and his whole family line. Perfect. And yet somehow he then swings with his great axe. He rolls a 17. This is why nobody likes you. And does 10 slashing damage. I take half. Okay, he picks up his great axe over his head and he swings it down upon you again. And you nimbly dodge out of the way. Damn straight, I The other Orog. Sweet. The other Orog also charges you. Because he can't get Venoran 20 feet in the air, and he doesn't know Scats is there. But... Ah! Uh, Don't worry, this one only rolls a 9. And a 13. Both of which miss. Yeah, also those were, uh... Orc Warchief rolls, but they're actually the same exact numbers, so it's okay. Uh, Graveris... Reverse gently rests her head on Tillman's shoulder. This is nice. It's creepy. This is a lovely field of death. <laughs> Tillman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's a normal elf. Um, <laughs> as I see, this is what I was talking about. And I draw my mistress sword, and I draw her scale blade sword. And I hand it to her. Okay. And we move. And we're moving. So if you frolic together over to the old rock. Do, do you want to undo the fuzzy handcuffs? Not yet. Does she have disadvantage on the rolls? I did say it was her non-dominant hand that you left free, so yep. she's. Well, I, I don't know if it'll be full disadvantage, but she will definitely roll with a penalty. Okay. Uh, and it was 30 feet to get up there, so I will make an attack. On Orog Dose. Ooh, a nine. A that nine is not going to hit anything on the field. No. Might even miss a tree. And Graveris attack, or did she take her turn? Uh, or no, I will let her. I will let her attack. She will swing. She rolls a twenty-one. And does three. Nice. Oh, and because Lyle's there, Lyle, this is the first, you're giving her sneak attack. I don't like this. Uh, if I can figure oh, out Oh, she to... uses a short sword. I see. Okay. 
Yeah, whatever. It's a stat block. It's a pre-made stat block that I used. So yeah, she does cool. an extra 2d6. She does 10. And I do tell her, don't make me regret this. <laughs> okay, the orcs. I'm going to let them do a perception check to see if they notice scats. No, they don't. Wow. I'm a sneaky person. Orcs 3 and 4 converge on Blurble. With Orc 5. Hey, this one's actually not going to be able to get to Blurble. He's going to have to dash <clears throat> in order to get adjacent. So, uh, we're going to start with 3 Orc attacks on Blurble. What's their movement rate? It is 30, however, they can, as a bonus action, move their speed again if they want to kill something. Oh, those jerks. Uh, okay, so we're going to do this, because, so Scats, I assume a third, uh, sorry, Blurble, does a 13 hit you? Uh, AC a 14. Oh, oh, well they hit, because they're blessed. Five slashing damage. Damn you, Isaac. Let's just say it's three hits. Uh-huh. So five, then 11, then 13. Uh, let's see, there's going to be two on Graveris. Both of those hit Graveris. I really need to, I'm gonna, between this session and next, I'll give her an individualized stat block, but, uh... So, she will... Yeah, she'll just take the hits. Okay, so that is... That is 27 damage. Oh, and I will modify her token so that you can see her hit points. Because they're not good. That's all my orcs. Okay, scats. Turn this around. Okay. Well, the very first thing I'm going to do is get angry. Mm -hmm. You don't want to save it for a non I have harder four. Fight? I, I have four. So I'm okay. Um, I'm going to step up here. Surprise! Smash him! I oh! I'm gonna say you'll have advantage, but I guess you doesn't really matter. So you, uh, sorry, and you hit the the big guy, right? Yeah. Hit the big guy, then. Twenty-four damage oh. to the Orog. And I get to smash him again. Just the sixteen hit. D16 does not hit. But I can roll the 1d4, right? Yes. You need a, you need a 2. There it is. There we go. Or 12. Or oh, I'm going to re-roll that damage just to see if I can get higher. And does, that doesn't include your, pro, your plus 2 from raging, right? Oh, yeah. There should have been a plus 2 on the other one as well. So 2 from the first one. And then you're going to roll for a higher number. Okay. So then 14. 14. You, he looks very upset. The Orc War Chief. Cool. Is Blurble down, or does she have like one hit point? That's Blurble. Blurble appears to have 14 hit points. The Orc War Chief lets out a commanding roar that seems to echo off the trees and the hills and reflect back upon you, and it terrifies you greatly. He then charges through the woods and swings on Lyle. Oh, uh, shit. It's a 19. 15 slashing damage. No, you know what? Yeah, okay. We're going to make the battle cry one of his attacks and the great axe the other one. Blurble. Well, if you're going to just... One moment. I'm going 
going to disengage from the tree stump and then uh, go over by Reina. All right, you disengage and regroup next to the squishy teenager. Look at her. She looks so much like a better target. <laughs> Lyle! Alright. Um, I'll swing on the Orog. The one that cats just beat the shit out of? That would be the one. Ha ha ha. I'm assuming a 25 hits. It does. And he takes 24 damage. And the giant beast in front of you sways and sways and then crashes down to the ground with a commanding thud. Yay, I killed it, it, it. Yep, all by yourself. Nice. Without any help at all. Because I'm a goddamn hero. Uh, the eyes of Groomsh approach. And they're going to cast... They're going to cast Firebolt! At... Scats. One's a 21. One's a 14. So assuming one hits... Yeah. Five fire damage. Okay. I don't have advantage... Or resistance against fire damage right now. Other damage, but not fire damage. That was the eyes of Grumsh, and it is Venorin, who's 20 feet in the air. With his free levitate. I'm going to aim at orc number four, and I'm going to cast lightning bolt. That should take out orc four, orc five... I don't see his number, but the guy standing above Orc 6 and the Orc War Chief. But I've also gotten a piece of uh, the Orog that uh, you killed him too fast. Yes, your assessment is correct. It will get uh, everyone in that line. I believe they make deck saves to take half. They apparently do make deck saves to take half. Yes. And let's see. DC 15. Alright, the Orc War Chief makes a deck save. Uh, let's see, not one of his proficiencies, so he's going to fail. You fail. 27. Then Orc 3. Dex fails. Orc 5 fails. Nice. Orc 4 passes. Blah. The 27, you instantly vaporize Orc 3 and Orc 5. Orc 4 looks, uh, well, it looks like you just got hit by lightning. Reyna is going to protect Blurble. How about off does the Orc Warrior Chief look? Mm, he's doing much better. Okay. Than the other orcs. So Reyna is going to. I could have sworn I gave her a uh, guiding bolt. But whatever, I'm the DM. I gave her guiding bolt. Roll 1d20 plus 4. She is aiming at uh, orc number... She'll aim at 4 since it just got hit by lightning. She hits it. She hits it for 14 damage. And finishes off orc number 4. And it's the Orog's turn. Uh, one of them despawns. <laughs> Let's see... Orog number two is going to focus his attention on Lyle. But why? Because he has advantage on all of his attacks. 19. God damn you. For six. I'll take the six. 25. Or the full eight. Oh no, you can have the eight. Yeah, yeah I'll have the eight. Reverse is uh, now going to. She will proceed to not make Tillman regret it yet. She swings at the orc next to her. 
She crits it. Crit. Which means she's going to do 11 plus 14, 25 damage. She slices the head right off the orc. Nice. Even yeah, a crit even with your offhand, I think, is decapitation. Still yeah. Me. Okay, so first my bonus action of mass healing word done at the fourth level of action. Uh, I believe I can do it. Six creatures. Yeah. So. Graveris, Lyle, Blurble. Anyone else damaged? Uh, not significantly. Yes, yeah, Scats took like five. Just hurt pretty bad. I'll give some to Scats too. I think that's everybody that's hurt, right? On our side? I believe that's correct, yes. Ugh. Eleven. Wow. Hey, I only needed five, so God honestly, damn. that's great. Did not roll well on that. Anything else? Uh, yes, then I'm going to attack the Orog with my sword. Because I'm just that good. 19! No, 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 19. That hits the Orog. For nine points of damage. Uh, no movement. The orcs. It's not a lot left. Alright, orc number two is going to attack Graveris. Rolls a 17, which hits Graveris and does four slashing damage to her. Orc number six is going to run down. Rain is the first thing in its path. Rolls a 22. Does 12 damage to Raina. Um, those are my only two works. Okay. Scats. Is it, is it too late for me to say that I have my mask on? Or should I put it on next time? I... Uh, I think it's an action to put it... Not an action, but I think it's something you'd... Please say so on your turn if you're putting it on. Okay. No problem. Hey, I'm going to come up here to this orc eye of whatever that is. Number Groomsh. one. Groomsh. Groomsh. That's exactly It kind of sounds like uh, what some other country would call like oatmeal or something. Anyways. I'm going to smash it. Some weird country like Canada. Some weird country like Canada. Canada. I think I missed it. You did indeed miss it. But did I miss it this time? With an 18? No, you did not okay. miss it. I'm going to reroll that damage. So, perfect. 16 damage. He's annoyed. And he has to make a con check. Why am I rolling a d20? Roll 1d20. DC is 10. He fails. Ha ha ha. So this guy who's dead is no longer blessed. Either is this guy or this guy. Did you orc. just... Oh, no, orc number one was killed. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Skats is fighting people with a disability, by the way. She's okay with it. Part of the initiation to being an Eye of Groom is that they take one of their eyes out. Because Groom should only have one eye. Well, the orc war chief depth perception. The orc war chief swings on Lyle. Thank you much. Lyle, twenty-one damage from the orc war chief. No. Wow, he's tough. Indeed, he is. And then he swings Ooh. again on Lyle. No. Oh, damn it! Oh. I, mean, I will assume you have the twenty-one. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Given it was close to f- with max damage. Blurble. 
Oh, yeah, I'm gonna cast Eldritch Blast on Orc number six. Number 28 for 26. Okay, yeah, a crit will um just vaporize the Orc into just dust. Um, is there any space in between the tree that Tillman's in front of and the one to the right, like that's in front of me, like down the middle? Yeah, yeah, I would, okay. I would assume so. I mean, it's a, it's a uh, top-down view, so I'm assuming the trunks are only taking up a small part of... I guess these could be bushes, but... Okay. I'm gonna just move a little bit towards the the middle, but kind of hide. <laughs> you also have another Eldritch Blast. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure I could move and do that. Alright, I'm gonna... Um, let's see. Uh, Orc War Chief number one. Uh, 21 for 13. That will hit. He is looking a bit wobbly. Lyle. Alright. You just said the war chief is looking wobbly? I did, but you don't get sneak attack on him. I don't. That really is conflicting for me. I will attack the Orog because sneak attack is awesome. 19 hits. He does. 21 damage. Which is why I went with the one with the sneak attack. Smart. The eyes of Grinch. Oh, uh, I'll also disengage and step back. The eyes of Grinch are going to try to firebolt scats. First one's going to be a disadvantage because. Right in front of me. Yes. So, 14, which I imagine does not hit you. Not. The other one is not a disadvantage, but he only rolled a 10. Well, ha ha to them. Yeah. Venorin. Alrighty then. I am going to twin. Chromatic Orb at level 3 to the Pair of Eyes. First Eye of Groomsh number 1 and then Eye of Groomsh number 2. Okay, you definitely hit number 1 or... 24 damage. 24 caster's choice damage. Yeah, let's call it, I don't know, thunder damage. And the second one is not going to hit. The 15. You left there. Well, I ran a cast healing word on you. You gain, you gain six hit points. Yay! Uh, Tillman, the Orog attempts to sever the left half of your body from the right half of your body. But he only rolls a nine. Oh, but then he rolls a twenty and a demolishing four damage. Oof. Reveris will stab back at him. With two misses. Tillman. Can you put an aura around her? So yes. I can see her better. Thank you. And then oh. Didn't you say I was blessed? Yes. I think you were one of them, yeah. Yeah. Does that mean I get to make it yep, D15 that I rolled earlier? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, you were aiming at the eyes, right? The eyes of Grimsh? Yeah. And they have a 16 anyway, so any number on the D4 would have made you hit. So, 20... 
something damage? 19 damage, that's what I mean. And now it's still Minster. Woohoo, bless! Okay, as a bonus action. One, two, three, four, five. I will cast Mass Healing Word on everybody that's damaged. That's Rivera, Lyle, Verbal, and Arena. Scats full help. I am. For all practical purposes. I mean, for all practical purposes. I am, I am full health. Oh. Didn't you take, like, five fire damage? Yeah, and then... Oh, until he healed you. <laughs> right. Well, if you want... If you have... If you're down any damage, take ten. Because there's... I'm not down any damage. Enough people. Okay. So everyone get back ten damage. Better than nothing. Rivera's too. Uh, yep, got her, actually. And, uh, Reyna is at full. And then I will attack the Orog. Ten. Not with Probably a ten, not. you won't. Nope. All right. And then I will put on my mask. Okay. Can I do that? Sure. Okay. Work number two so. is going to maneuver around. Oh, go ahead. So everyone within 20 feet of me should get a plus one to attack. Woot woot. Nice. Well, work number two attacks you. 18 for 14 slashing damage. Fuck you! Gets. I took half on that. I imagine you would. Yeah, I'm gonna hit this work eye number one in front of Ooh, that wasn't great for damage, though. Doesn't matter, okay. it kills him. Oh, good. Okay, then I'm going to step over to this, or eye number two, and smash him. Nice. And I'll reroll that damage, probably won't go much higher. Nope. Okay, so, 15. 15 damage to the second time, Grimsh. The Orc Warchief will step up. Identify Lyle as the weakest character on the table. Not the character, but the uh, hit point. What? Well, whatever. They've been beating on you a lot. They're going to continue it. Uh, critical miss and critical hit. Hi. Hey, God tw- damn it. 21 it's good slash. to have a raid. And remember, you can't have that. I am still up, but just barely. Verbal. Hey, I'm going to cast Elder's Blast on the War Chief. It will be a disadvantage because he's so close. But hey, you still hit. Uh, 18 plus 1. <laughs> 16 damage. He's still he is still standing. Alright, I'm gonna go again. Nineteen for or twenty for eleven. He's looking exceptionally woozy. Lyle. Alright, well, I'm gonna attack the war chief now. Because I get my sneak attack. So that's a 14. Will the d4 do me any good? It could. I hate you. Well, right now it's a miss. With a little luck. Okay, I have Grim's turn. <sighs> 15 doesn't hit? 15 doesn't hit. You only needed 16. There were three numbers oh. on that tie that would have done it. I hate you. Well, the dice hate you, and that's oh, the, the worst enemy to have. Another lightning bolt that's centered on Lyle. Scats? Make a wisdom save. Uh, crap. Uh, oh, don't I have the D4? I'm blessed. I don't... No, sec. I, will, I will look it up. I know it works on attack rolls and ability checks. It may also work on saving throws. I think, I think it's on saving throws. 
I think it's on attacks and saves, not ability check. That could be. Oh, I have advantage. Attack roll or a saving throw. Okay, good. I have advantage on saving uh, throws when I'm raging, but uh, I mean, it's still a 10. So. Your, your advantage is, yeah. <laughs> roll right. 1d4 then? Roll 1d4. Oh, gosh. Oh, can I roll, re-roll that? Do I so get now to... you can roll the whole thing again, yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's 11 or... Twenty. There we go. I would, I would go with the 20. Okay. He attempts to command you to grovel. Actually, no. Flee. Flee was the word he used, but... Uh, you resist his charm. You Lenore. say back to him, tick. He I says flee, and you jump on I'm his leg and bite him. <laughs> I'm in a mindless rage, so I can't actually be charmed or frightened while I'm in That's a rage. That's probably why it failed. Hmm. Lenoran. I will do Firebolt to the remaining I have Grimsh. You hit. 16. For 10. Leaving him at okay. one. Uh, Reyna will Sacred Flame the Obrock. I shout at Scats. I softened him up for you. And the Obrock that. will do a deck save. To avoid taking her two damage. Uh, her DC is 12, so he passes and takes no damage. The Obrock turn. Or it attempts to smash Tillman. Bring it, buddy. 23 for 10 slashing damage. And then a critical miss. Uh, Graveris will stab with the short sword. She will hit with the sword sword, and she'd like to do sneak attack damage, but the three killed it anyways. So a second Orog falls to the ground with a commanding thud. And then it's Tillman. Lyle, how much are you down? All but one. I will take all your healings. So I will cast Cure Wounds on at a third level on Lyle instead of attacking the war chief you get uh, 24 back yay and I get uh, that was Third level, I said? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I get three, four, five back. Because I get two plus spell level back whenever I cast a healing. So. The orc attempts to kill Lyle. Only a ten. Scats. Okay. Hey, I hit the orc eye number two. Ooh, 14 does not hit. It does not. If I, if I yeah. rolled a 1d4, oh, would that is, help? It could. AC 16. You not have advantage when... Uh, not, on, not on... Not uh, on... Regular the attack rolls. rolls. Anyway, that, that hits him. That is enough, and that will kill the Eye of Grimsh. Let's see, who else is around that I can hit? There's an orc standing behind Lyle and Tillman. And there's the orc warlord standing in front of the two of them. Both are a little far for you to get there this uh, time. Uh, they are. They are. Okay. I will run then, I guess. 35-ish feet. And go. I'm coming! The orc war chief. 22 on Lyle for 18 damage. God damn it. 19 on Lyle. 12 more. Blurble. Is Lyle down? Not yet. Okay. Uh, one moment.
Just remember, everybody, right now, everyone gets a plus one to attack, whether it's spells or whatever. Great. It's within 20 feet? Yep. Yeah, so... Years Sorry, I was just looking if I have a not ranged thing. <coughs> what? Right. right. I'm an Eldritch Blast. Um, the one, I can't see his name now. The War Chief one. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, 25 for 15. <laughs> Yes, he was at, like, two hit points. Orc War Chief is dead. Oh. Right, and one more uh, towards Orog 2. That's the one that's still standing. Orc 2, Orc no. 2, yeah. Orc 2, yes. No, 14. Unfortunately not. No. <laughs> Lyle. Gravers turns and asks me if... I want to keep this orc alive and handcuff him to me. <laughs> Let's not make a precedent of doing that. You guys could be like a, sh- a traveling show. <laughs> we already are in too many. You gotta ways. work on your high kicks. While you are fully capable of ending this fight right now. Okay. I'm assuming that. In there. Twenty-three. Lyle kills the. One shots the orc that had not taken any damage that whole fight. <laughs> I immediately turn toward Graveris. Sword still in hand. She'll roll her eyes and look at you and hand the sword back. And I say, keep it. Actually, I take off my mask and then say, keep it. <laughs> right. The whole time she's just like, ugh. Uh, uh, I, cast, I cast Mage Hand and ceremoniously high-five the party. Uh, in which case, she will put the sword into her scabbard. Not a euphemism. Hey, now. I said, not a euphemism. Which made it sound like a euphemism. Yeah, that never helps. Hey, she and I had to share a bunk on that boat. Yeah, had to. We are handcuffed. Lyle cleared out so many boat, so many uh, beds for you guys could have used. We are handcuffed. Not like she could be at the one in the next room. I think I described her, you guys doing, uh, having the two twin beds with the arms oh, yeah, between right. them. It was still romantic. If you <laughs> if you selectively wanted to view it that way, uh, Venoran at some point realizes he doesn't actually have control over a spell he didn't cast. Uh, but about ten minutes later, he's gently let to the ground. We throw a rope up to him and pull him down like a balloon. Probably. Well, that, that's why I cast Mage Hand for the high five. Okay, who is still hurt? Base. You guys might want to be clear out the some enemies. Of the, uh, yeah, I can see so far. So, Graveris, me a little bit, Lyle a lot, Thermo a lot. I have some. four hit points. No, I'm only down eight. <laughs> Lyle the ten. Okay, first... Lyle, you go back. I'm going to assume. Let me see. If I give you back 35 hit points, will that bring you over half? It will bring me over half, yeah. Okay, so you are back at half, as I do preserve life, channel divinity. That puts me up 21 hit points. You're at half? Okay. And then, uh, I see. Oh, there you are. And then I'll do another um, cure wounds for 
with 14 hit points. I'm at 39. Yay. I cast Fireball centered on Lai. Fuck you! And we will adventure onward. It is a long journey on foot, but you are eventually able to make it to the mountains. And having made this trip once before, you, uh, and having cleared out all the yetis and so forth that live on the mountain for the most part, you are able to uh, find the, find with a little bit of difficulty, the path you took the first time. Time has quickly covered the Temple of Saloon that you once visited with a a fresh layer of snow, uh, erasing all signs that you were ever there. But but nonetheless, you're able to find it. Boom! Uh, Entering the temple, there's still that giant hole in the floor. Uh, That's where I start yelling, boom. Because I remember he could hear them singing. That's true. Um, you hear, you hear like, uh, uh, like a banging noise coming from deeper in the mountain, coming up through the hole in the floor. Not me this time. Um, assuming you're intent on meeting him, you would probably hook up some ropes and descend down into the, there might even still be ropes from the last time you were here. Has it been over a day since that fight yet? Yes. Or are we still on the same day? Uh, no, it would have been. This would have been several days later. Okay. Uh, during yeah, during your time here, you probably would have uh, spotted, but not necessarily closely encountered any of the uh, any additional orc hunting raiding parties. Occasionally, you would see one in the distance. Sometimes they'd be traveling with members of the order. Sometimes it would just be the orcs. Uh, but you're definitely oh. you're definitely deep inside orc territory. Uh, though you know, oh, right. major mer- okay, I will assume every morning you, because you you have the extended one, right? The twenty four hours, or is it eight hours? It's not twenty four, but I don't remember what it was. I think you can cast a sp- spend a sorcery point or something to extend it. Right, right, right. I remember it being basically the adventuring day. Uh, well, so yes, I'll, I'll assume that you're. Preparing, uh, you're you're traveling with mage armor intact. Uh, you definitely know the bulk of their army is to the west of you, but uh, this is like being in a foreign, dangerous land. Uh, but up on the mountain, things are much different. You're definitely away from the realities of that. And in the temple, you're able to work up your ropes and send back into the the tunnels beneath that had the paintings and such done by Um. Uh, when you as you approach the chamber where you first met him, he is, you, you hear the, the just sort of a rhythmic banging. Um, now that you're closer, it sounds more like chiseling. And sure enough, when you reach the edge, that, the ledge that looks down over the chamber where Um lives, um, Um is at work. Uh, there are a lot of new things, having uh, new um, statues that he's chiseled. There were Last time you were here, there were a whole lot of, of largely animals. Um, there's a great many more animals, ferocious beasts, and uh, as well as like a, a stone soldiers. They they look like a melding of like men and orc almost, just like ferocious armored uh, statues, a little taller than a normal person would be. But a lot of the space in between the animals has been filled with these added statues. Over this, the noise that he's making, you have to yell a little bit louder. But he eventually notices your presence and puts down his tools and kind of brushes himself off of all the, the dust created from his chiseling. And a, uh, his large form stands up and he walks over to greet you. Hey, you are. Boom, good to see you. Welcome hey, back, friends. 
have you been holding up? Good. <laughs> um, he's been fine. Uh, he he points at his. Uh, he says the what you told me of the the war with the orcs uh, inspired me to create these figures. Uh, does your return mean you've found what happened to the the priestesses who lived upstairs? And I get sort of serious and say yes. We um, they were taken and used by the order. That's correct, right? It was the order. Indeed. And uh, who are allied or using the orcs in this region. They're they dead. All lost, yes. Um, he kind of slowly puts his hand on the wall and, and sits down, just looking, you know, uh, it's it's something he probably figured was the case, but Hearing it is both, uh, you know, it, it gives him closure, but upsets him nonetheless. And I take out the um, holy symbol that I took from there, and I hand it to him. Um, and he'll, he just kind of looks at it and, you know, plays with it in his hands, looking at all... You know, looking it over, looking at all the sides, and I say, "Do you know what this is?" Uh, it's the way they spoke to their gods. It is, and I, I think they would have liked if you had one to remember them by. Uh, a few moments or a few minutes even pass, uh, where he simply sort of sits in, in solemn. Reflection. And eventually he kind of he, he will look to you to look to the party and say and And where is it you're going next? Are you going to fight? That is our plan. We're going east uh, west to Erangard. We understand they may have come under attack. We want to see what's going on there. And an ally of ours may be there as well. You get the impression that as he's listening, he's sort of deep in thought. Eventually, he he stands and says... I would like to help. Tell me, how how best can I be of service to you in your efforts? I want to see those who killed the priestesses of Saloon brought to justice. And if the party wants to take a minute privately to figure that out, that's fine. I'm waiting for Lyle to... uh suggest he come with us. I wasn't sure if we should do that quite yet. (laughs) Then have you ever well I would also that I would also suggest maybe he go to either Stilson's Crossing or well Stilson's Crossing I guess and maybe I was thinking we should try and get him to somewhere a little more accessible if then We could go to Stilson's Crossing with him, introduce him to the people, and say, hey, this is a good guy. And Stilson's Crossing was evacuated. Oh, completely? Remember, okay. you, uh, that was where you guys actually made a stand against the orcs? You blew up the town? Yeah, I just couldn't remember. The children were turned to stone. You rescued them from the witch. Yeah, that's right. And then was, that, were... was that now or then? That was in the present time. Okay. 
you actually never left the uh, the mine and like pretty much the mine is the only place you were in the past within Hedden. I guess technically you were on a uh, you were in a wagon briefly. Yeah, when well, we got kidnapped. How far is it from Stilson's Crossing to Hedden? Or how many days travel? I know, I'm trying to remember. I want to say it's like two. A giant would be a little faster. I think it was like three days up to a little city that was outside and then like a half a day in Hedden. I, know, I definitely have to mess around with my thing because according to my little compass rose that would be like 500 miles and that's not correct it's also not 250 feet we, we were on foot at that time I think we, we didn't have horses or anything you have been talking about fixing that for a while yeah well whatever on horses I want to say on, on good horses I want to say it was a day so by foot, it's probably twice that. Maybe a little, little longer. Do we want to check in and head and get a good night's sleep before we go to Erangard? Actually, do they have docks in Hedden? Uh, they have, yes. I wonder if we could get a boat to take us to the shore across from Erangard. Go around that. You can't see what's north of that, but if that's just a, a little peninsula that Hetton's on, uh, it is. You can go up and around it. You can also go to there's. I think there's a small, like fishing village that that kind of feeds Hetton. Um, that's on the west side of that. Mm. So you can either go from Hetton. Hetton's up on a cliff, so they have these right. big winches that will lower you down. But they do have they do have docks. What do you guys think? I mean, you can also, if you wanted to, you you could send him with something. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but some kind of identifier that would let them know he's with you guys. I know, I just worry about And it would be nice to check in. A shirt that says, I'm with stupid. (laughs) Um, Before you guys make too many plans, uh, we'll we'll say that Um is very curious. He kind of wants to hear like, everything that's happened regarding, like, the war. Did um, someone draw any pictures or anything of the cities we've been to? Didn't we do that early on, or get... There uh, was I seem to one that. half-finished photo of Arninari in the bubble. <laughs> okay. I do need to... I know we've drawn on the map a lot. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Should we go to Hetton, check in, get a good night's sleep? And then yes. take a boat to Erangard. I mean, it's going to take you a couple of days to get there. Yeah. But the boat should speed things up getting to Erangard. Hopefully that would make up some of the time we're spending going to Hedden. Not that boats are that fast, but they can travel 24-7. Are we going to meet back up with Umet again at some point? I want to take him with us to Hedden. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, if you want to, if if the consensus is we take him now, we'll see if he'll come now. Um, and and you know, Blurble probably does her illusion and kind of shows the different places you guys have been, including Hedden. Nice. Um, These are all the wonders you can see. Yeah, if you look out your left, you'll see Hedden. Yes, so when you guys start mentioning things like Hetton, he, he asks you, you know, what, what happened in he- what's happened in Hetton? Are they able to defend themselves? He asks the same about, you know, when you if you guys talk about Riverhaven and the other places you've gone. But since Hetton's the place you're proposing taking him, yeah, he asks you, tell me about Hetton. How, how would defend it as the city... And I said, you know, it's pretty good. They have people, but it's the last free city in the north. So we want to make sure it stays that way. I will come with you to Hedden. And I bet they would love your sculptures. And he tells you, uh, 
I suspect you're right. And he gets up, takes his chiseling tools, his hammer and his chisels and such, and he um, he, he puts them away. Um, it's, it's nothing special, it's just a ledge he's carved into the, into the wall, but you can tell he's, you know, putting these tools back in the place where they belong. Um, he, when he's done that, he, there's a river, I remember, that cuts through this, this chamber, and he kind of splashes some water over himself and just layers of, of dust, again, from carving all these figures is, is washed, washed off of him. And he walks over uh, into a corner where he has a chest. And as you watch, he opens up this chest. He takes out a dazzling, dazzlingly brilliant uh, great uh, warhammer. Ooh. He takes out a like a, a sash, like a, a wharf style sash that hangs that hangs cool. over his uh, across his chest. And as he turns it around, he puts on a few other elements, gauntlets on his arms and such. Uh, it, the whole time he's placing these things on him, it looks to be the kind of like ritualistic. It's, it's a well-practiced procedure he's going through, something he's clearly done a great many times. When he, by the time he walks back up to you, he's, a, he's fully armored. Um, he has a... Um, a thick hide armor on with uh, a lot of adornments. And though you're not familiar with the military insignia of stone giants, uh, it's clear from the various decorations on this sash hanging across his chest that he must have been a rather well-accomplished uh, fighter in his time. Or owns a bedazzler. Or he owns a bedazzler. I think I like him more now, knowing that he's a military guy. He takes the, the little holy symbol that you gave him, and he pins it alongside the others, the other uh, adornments on his sash. Nice. And uh, picks up the warhammer, which you is of such impeccable quality that you can tell. Uh, not only is it clearly does it clearly have some kind of magical property, but um, it was. Ama- you know, the, the kind of intersection of amazing magic and amazing craftsmanship as well. Um, and he tells you that the fire giants command the fire and the storm giants command the storm. But the stone is my domain. And he takes the war hammer and slams the, the handle of it into the ground the chamber almost it feels for a moment as if the chamber is shaking uh, but realize what you, you realize instead what it is is all the statues are beginning to animate and move nice holy crap the the both the newly carved soldiers and the long uh, you know the, the ones that have been here all along the the creatures and ferocious animals uh, begin to stir to life and uh, begin to fall, fall into a, um, you know, they, they begin to line up in ranks. Did did we just amass an army? It's not the biggest army. It's probably about forty people, you know, between the statues and the. Uh, right, but it's a but stone cool. army. Th- yeah, forty. Th- there's, there's forty or fifty stone animated stone creatures that are under apparently Oom's command, who's apparently friendly to you. And, that and is... I say, oh, okay. and I say, oh yeah, they're definitely going to like your statues. 